Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we have another madam with us again. And today she is going to enlighten us with one more nakshatra, and it's Punar Vasu. And Rahu is going to move into Punar Vasu very soon. So please enlighten us. Welcome, and please share with us. Hello, everyone. A great uh, day to all of you, and thank you, Baba Ji, for calling me on your channel. Uh, so it's become kind of a um, becoming more familiar face with your viewers here. Well, Rahu is going to move on the sixth of uh, December in Punarvasu, and it will bring about a lot of changes with it. Before we move on to Rahu in Punarvasu, which we will be talking in detail some other time, but and and we will touch a little bit of aspects here also. We will see how the transit works out. But before that, let us talk about Punarvasu. Okay, so uh, we will. Uh, Punarvasu nakshatra. The deity of Punarvasu nakshatra is Aditi. Okay, so she is known as the mother of the Adityas. Who are the Adityas? The Adityas are the solar deities. Now I've always told you that we think that the sun is one because we see the sun as one but the sun travels in the 12 signs or rather uh, it it gets a placement in all the 12 zodiacs every month and every month it has a different quality it is associated uh, with the sun here the name of the sun you can say that the name of the sun changes or we say the sun the son of Aditi changes. There are 12 sons of Aditi and they change as per the uh, solar month in the which zodiac they are placed in. They are accompanied by a different sets of uh, set of rishis, Gandharvas, uh, dancers, uh, you know, all these people and different set of Nagas, everything. That information is available. And their quality as to what they happen to be in every sign changes every month. So she is, uh, in earlier times, a child was also known by the name of his parent or uh, any either parent. Like for example, Sita Ji was also known as Janki, the daughter of uh, Raja Janak, King Janak. <clears throat> then, uh, Shri Krishna was also known as Vasudev, son of Vasudev. Yashoda Nandan, Devki Nandan. They, so they, you, they were associated, a child had many names of which one or two of them were associated with the parent also. So the Adityas are actually from Aditi, of Aditi, Aditya. Okay. So they're the son of the creative power of the universe. Aditi is said to be the creative power of the universe. Now, Bhavajit has done a lot of research on the Bhagavad Gita. So he, not the Gita, the Bhagavad. So he has, he knows that uh, Anusuya, Atre and Anusuya. So Anusuya was the rich, mother, Rishi, mother, uh, Rishi lady who had the power in her to get the forms of Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh as children, right? So now one can ask whether these were, these gods were born of Anusuya or Anusuya was born of gods. So this is a maze of Punarvasu when it is said that one is complementary of the other. You do not know which comes first, the egg or the hen or the chicken. And that is the basis of Indian Puranic stories. You know, they sometimes say that um, that uh, Apara Shakti, that is Uma, Parvati, they were generated from uh, Himavat or for that matter um, your uh, Prajapati, uh, Daksh Prajapati or she is the generator of Daksh Prajapati or Himavat. So this Punarvasu Nakshatra is in essence 
a very very protective force it is a very protective force it is ruled by aditi and aditi is said to be the mother of all the gods okay and uh, she along with her husband she is also said to be like i said she is the mother of the gods so she is the mother goddess the creative force on the other hand she is one of the 60 daughters of daksh prajapati who has been married to rishi kashyap there are many stories there are many variations in the puranic story and it's one of the 60 daughters of um, daksh prajapati and she is one of the 13 who was given in marriage to rishi kashyap she has a sister her younger sister diti now aditi is the mother of all the god, uh, god um, the could i say the devatas okay and the gods and diti is the mother of all the rakshasas so aditi is a sterling force she is a very strong force a very calming effect she is the expanding effect okay and she is all good things personified so i can also say that a person who is the mother of all the gods can you believe that she is going to be such a formidable force so she is a very strong force and when you have planets present in punarvasu nakshatra especially in the third and the fourth pada they are very strong very fortified because the third and the fourth pada are varbottam padas and they are very fortified so this gives a person a very strong ability to stand and no matter you will fall because it's punarvasu nakshatra so the first time around if things are not happening for you you should be thankful and i'll tell you why you should be very thankful is the second time round if things are happening for you because punar means again so things are now showing up for you and you will reach good heights always remember that being a very protective force if you have especially if you have benefics placed in that nakshatra you will always be protected you will always be uh, you know uh, surrounded by a lot of good goodness around you which will not let you fall down you may fall but you will always get the ability to stand up and go again with a cut so okay and this starts with 30, 20 degree in gemini so it has three padas in gemini the first second third being the uh, vargottam and the fourth pada in cancer again being a vargottam pada okay so it is the star of renewal so as i said supposing uh, anything that you do in this nakshatra is uh, when say supposing moon is supposing somebody has been doing a prayer okay just uh, for example you have been doing a prayer to um, get a child okay they you can do it in chitra nakshatra or you can do it uh, saragasi supposing you have already uh, had a Mm, surrogacy uh, done not surrogacy done a procedure for surrogacy done but somehow you are not able to conceive in that time if you do that procedure again in this nakshatra of punarvasu remembering the aditi goddess and saying that you are doing it again for the second time or the third time second time preferably and you wish to become a mother trust me there chances that you might just conceive because you are doing re r e re punar means again so redoing something in this nakshatra gives you great benefits okay so now supposing i have again today mercury is retrograde and we are doing a punarvasu nakshatra so it is definitely a good time to do something 
because the third house third lord of speech oration teaching is definitely retrograde so when you're doing an uh, third uh, a chunk of punar vasu lies in the third house and the lord is retrograde it's a good time to do this next so now when we are moving on to the stars when we see the stars castor and pollux so castor if we we come down to you know putting them as beings that we always should and do then castor is the mortal twin and it is he is known for the skill in horsemanship and pollux is the immortal twin known for his skill in boxing as we so the first time round whatever you do faces mortality what do you mean by mortality it will not continue further for a long time but pollux being the immortal twin when you're doing something for the second time it definitely will go up that is what the story of this nakshatra is all about and this nakshatra has the vastu prapanna shakti the power to gain or receive objectives or ability to gain wealth and sustenance sub, uh, substance okay so what does a person do a person goes out you have an objective so when people in this nakshatra will definitely have an objective what is the major objective that they go out and they gain things so it's more of a um, nakshatra where it wants material benefits also and they have the ability to work for it to gain it okay the foundation is the air and the winds and the foundation below is moisture or rain they carry the air the air carries the air or the wind carries the rain and moisture and what does it do it revitalizes and it helps in production of herbs and trees so it revitalizes the plant so anything that is dying or dead it can be rejuvenated can be brought back to life in this fashion okay so as we move ahead now we take up the case of uh, success the moon in the second pada in punarvasu okay and um, american super achiever so if you see in the navam this moon will go in the second house but that i think will take up the pada some other time but american super achiever a bantam size uh, bantam sized uh, texas billionaire in the industry of computers aerospace biotech and high tech fields he built electronic data systems in dallas into a multi million dollar business that it is with his financial skill and expertise he was appointed by governor white in mid 1983 to chair a select committee on public education to make recommendations for a comprehensive reform now the things that i want to show you here is he has come from very humble beginnings ross perot has come from very very small beginnings and yet he has made it real big in life extremely big and he's been very generous with his uh, you know funds also he's he's an ace businessman he's focused and went and got it focus is also because of adra his lagna is in adra so he has to, he has had to struggle but he's got what he has but moon the second lord of um finances is present there in this nakshatra of uh your punarvasu so it was bound that he would get his finances and in the navam she goes into the early sign that to taurus so it's just written that yes he will be able to get it so uh, perot married margaret uh, bringham whom he had met on a uh, blind date in 1956 and they had uh, five kids children a genuine family man he gives generous credit to margot five out of my five kids are too good to be true thanks to their mother so another uh, you know moon is also family because it's the lord of the second house moon is your mentality 
always because that is your mind frame so which nakshatra is this, is it placed in it's placed in punarvasu so he will never get tired of doing something time and again to give it a better shape and uh, the 10th lord of career sun uh, moon is the lord of the second house in lagna with jupiter where is his jupiter placed his jupiter is placed in 7 degrees again jupiter is placed in uh, adra nakshatra his lagna is in adra nakshatra and his sun is also in adra nakshatra went through the fire test of fire in life and yet he came out to be a very very successful man that when we do the adra nakshatra we will see why but as far as his wealth is concerned he was supposed to reach this height because it's punarvasu it, it was a very territorialized thing it, he would have got that wealth okay but you see this in the lagna moon gets uh, a sun gets jupiter gets exalted in the lagna okay in the sense that sorry it gets digbali in the lagna in the first house jupiter is the lord of the 10th house and jupiter is the lord of the 7th house both are the houses related to career so he got he gets a very strong career there is a gajkesari yog here in the lagna 1 2 when the 7th lord is in the lagna the person gives a lot of importance to his partners personal or private or personal or business partners in life okay warren buffett we all know him he is american accountant and ceo of berkshire hathaway following a finance accounting field in college buffett received a bs and ms in economics he is noted as being a savvy investor increasing his company's net worth by 44.4% in 1989 as of 2001 he is one of the nation's wealthiest man with his wife susan whom he married in 1952 he had three kids he and susan decided to live separately in 1977 well she decided to live separately because she wanted because he was gaining his career was gaining grounds and she could not expand on her career so he decided uh, she decided to work on her career to give her career a go and she decided to live on her own they still remained friends right till the time of her death in 2004 and one of her and she worked for his charitable organizations also and one of his charitable foundations was established in her memory in june 25 on june 25 2006 the multi millionaire businessman and financial wiz announced his intention to give most of his fortune not to his children and heirs but to philanthropic causes so they joined hands with bill gates foundation bill and melinda gates foundation and they decided to give all their you know these these billionaires they have been deciding to give much of their um, wealth to philanthropy rather than to passing it on to their children even bill gates they decided to you know just part some money to their children to make them comfortable but not so comfortable that they do not want to work and uh, then give the rest away okay now you see the lagna lord is placed in the 7th house again so he would again give importance to his uh, spouse would give importance to him to but it's a malefic there mars so she decided she said she had given him so much importance that after but they remained friends that's the best part if you read the uh, net if you read uh, work on him you will see that he, they remained friends till she died though she, he was still in a living relation with somebody else so you see the fifth lord is also sitting in the seventh house the fifth lord and the seventh lord are friends yeah and they remained friends that's the part both the ladies remain friends coming to his chart you have mars and jupiter sorry mars jupiter jupiter in his chart which is uh, in punarvasu nakshatra okay so you see that uh, married he married twice 
okay uh he married twice okay but people can say that it's very common but nevertheless it's it was a very very different case as compared to the other cases that we see and he there is also this in this nakshatram jupiter is the fourth lord okay and uh, fourth lord of what masses fourth lord of uh, affections fourth lord of storing of wealth in punarvasu high success rate very very wealthy person we have seen that he is one of the wealthiest man in the us uh, lagna lord is it's in the seventh house and what is the seventh house seventh house is also gain in status seventh house is also uh, your pada prapti or your second public platform okay and it's to the fifth lord of intelligence and mars mars is being a separative planet here one he, it is a natural malefic and 12 is the uh, it's a 12th lord the second it's the 12th lord so it causes him separation from his first wife the combination is aspected by retrograde saturn which is the lord of the second and the third house second house is family and wealth so he again you see there will be repetitive successes falls and yet repetitive successes in his life as far as wealth is concerned and again third lord of bhagya of marriage twice marriage was definite guarantee for this person Uh, so now i was telling you about uh, you know aditi being the mother, mother goddess so she in every lifetime she and rishi kashyap they do a lot of penance okay they did a lot of penance and with that penance they were able to appease lord uh, you know vishnu lord vishnu and lord vishnu they asked aditi asked that as many times that you are born on this planet please be born from my womb so he says okay and he is born as the vaman avatar we know that right we, he was born at the vaman avatar to aditi when uh, when it was bali was going to perform a yagna to become the king of all the three worlds and then the you know these uh, Bali was a rakshas born in the kul of rakshas though he was born as a grandson of prahlad but he was a rakshas and he was he was getting very um bold he was getting very very big very very strong and they did not want him to mount onto that chair because they knew the rakshasas at the end of the day would not would behave as such and there was one thing wrong with raja bali he whenever people came to ask him anything he gave so that we'll take up in shravana when we see that because of this um problem of his he was he was penalized but that is being born as the son of you know aditi and uh, kashya vishnu in form of the dwarf vaman avatar he the dwarfed brahmin he takes care of the universe so the children of this uh, people of children of people born in this nakshatra will rise very high okay especially if they are ladies so their children will leave behind some mark or the other then shri ramchandra ji was also born to aditi as kaushalya in treta yug in dwapar yug shri krishna was born to dev ki mata who was a form of aditi so not that we mere mortals have a chance of competing anywhere but in our own special way we can if your mother or your father has a planet in punarvasu you do stand a chance of rising quite high in life okay. or if you happen to have it one of your children definitely should we saw in case of um, perot also okay and we saw in case of 
in this case of you know Warren Buffet. So they will definitely have some children of theirs, one of the children who will have very stellar qualities. And Lord Ram himself is born in Punarvasu. Yes. And his moon is in Punarvasu. Yes. His Lagna and Moon both are supposed to be in Punarvasu. So he see he has twins. He has yeah. twins. Yes. Uh, love and Kush. And yeah. uh, Moon see and again he's had a very dual life, if you see. When he has had to live in the, you know, most of his life he's had to live in a, a very ethic kind of, uh, aesthetic kind of manner or uh, a monk aesthetic. like, not even monk, a hermit kind of manner where he used to live in the forest, fight and so he's had very strong planets. So if people say, you know, you have exalted planets, you have a lot of Rajyog, if you go by Sri Ramchandraji's chart, I cannot say that you will have a very uh, lot of luxury. <laughs> Peaceful life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very, see, he has had a very battle hardened life. Exalted Mars. Exalted Venus. Very beautiful wife. But then separation from wife. Exalted uh, Saturn. Exalted Jupiter. Exalted Sun. All so are he's got five, huh? Everybody is exalted. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jupiter, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars all are in Kendras. So they're forming those yogas also. Yes, yes. So uh, just having very exalted planets, we need not feel very exalted. <laughs> we have our share to work on. She embodies infinity and the primordial vastness. Okay. She's boundless, vast, and limitless like the sky. Shitij is the word. Okay. And it's uh, Shitij is the sky means, you know, it's like the ether. I wouldn't say it's not limited to the our sky that we see. <laughs> it's like the horizon which never ends. She is nurturing mother and protector of children. So the key points that we are going to see in this are surrogacy and foster parenting. Um, because she takes everybody around her as her own. So there is a lot of uh, natural love which comes. So again, I'll just take Ramchandraji's chart only in his Lagna. Okay, you have Lagna and Moon both there in Punarvasu Nakshatra. So if I take up foster parenting in surrogacy, he has he for him when we say Ram Rajya for him every person. Why did he let Sita Ji go? He let her go because he said that every person is a child, and it's like a child laying a ble blemish on me. Okay, so he, when he says that, he means that every person on his land is his child. And he cares for, it doesn't matter what they uh, work, caste, street they belonged to in. It was a matter of, uh, just a matter of person. Every person had to follow the rule. Every person had, so he said that even as a king, I cannot uh, stand and say that I will not abide by those rules. They are the rules and every person, the king or the papa will have to follow rules. It's like having a very samdrishti or an equality behavior with everybody. Irrespective. So you see and there, it's a very balanced and a reasonable person. You know, you can always, uh, any one of you, any one of us can always get, um, get our parents around, especially the mothers. The strictest of the mothers can be got around, right? So there, uh, the mothers can be got, okay? And it's all about nurturing this nakshatra is very good at nurturing if you have again uh, if you have a child if you have a person born in 
um, if you have a planet in this nakshatra then you have the ability to nurture things so supposing you have your um, fifth lord sitting here then you have the ability to nurture children okay if you have uh, your eighth lord sitting here then you can act as a parent to your uh, spouse's family and this nakshatra is all about creating harmony how do you remember this see a mother would always want to bring about harmony in the family okay so she this nakshatra has a great deal to create harmony remember that a part of it is also in uh, cancer and when you are communicating the third house of the natural zodiac there has to be a harmony otherwise it would be an argument which would stop a good orator knows how to leave an influence and leave a good feeling around this nakshatra because it's the goddess of creation she will definitely protect so when you are out on a journey especially when moon is moving into punarvasu if you pray to this deity of aditi and ask you to keep you safe trust me bombs would break around you but you would still be safeguarded is the divine force that is protecting you the creative force of the nature adaptable and amiable so it's about restoring goods and it's also the commencement of wealth as i told you earlier it's a very materialistic also because people want things you know materially this is a very enriching nakshatra it does bestow a lot of wealth for you and if you see a boomerang okay the boomerang always comes back like it is being restored to you if it's thrown in a proper manner it's a weapon that the aborigines of australia would use to um, hunt they could hear a sound and to make a kill they would knock a person with that um, knock an animal with that boomerang and when it was thrown at a right angle it would come back to the owner okay so donald trump uh well he is under a lot of we know him all of us know who he is so i'm not going to go there again but his uh his real estate business has gone into waters into hot water many a times he's made a fortune of 4 billion okay he's got a saturn and venus in the 12th house in um this nakshatra of punarvasu he's made a fortune estimated at 4 billion by forbes in 2015 by finding and buying losing properties and turning them around okay so venus is his third lord of um courage of initiation saturn is the sixth lord of competition and losses litigation lawsuits venus is again the 11th a 10th lord of profession and he made it into a profession of buying properties at low cost and turning them around and selling them at very high costs saturn is also the 7th lord of public platform secondary house of business also punarvasu is called the star of renewal it always tends to fail at the first attempt of any pursuit and it always succeeds in the second time round so it's also called light again punar vasu okay vasu means light is the creative forces vastu prapan to able to gain something again i said beat power beat uh, beat power beat a public platform beat courage well he is one of the richest uh, real estate moguls now when you were earlier on talking about rahu moving into punarvasu nakshatra well it's the 12th house for him uh when rahu moves into uh one nakshatra okay then it modulates itself according to the behavior of the nakshatra so far we have seen rahu crossing a slesha we've seen rahu cross uh, you know 
Pushya. And when Rahu was crossing Pushya, for people who had planets in Pushya, they would see all of a sudden, they would want to learn something new. They would uh, want to kind of uh, experiment with different forms of energy. They would want to experiment with, uh, you know, higher learnings. And if Rahu is oscillating at a good uh, area there, you would be able to gain a lot of, uh, what should I say, a lot of name and fame also, depending on the house it is for you. Because the fourth house essentially is the house of uh, masses. And when Rahu is in particular in Pushya Nakshatra, then you have the ability to gain name through different, very different sources. Why do you say that? Why do I say that? Is because it is Pushya again is ruled by Saturn and Jupiter. So you have the ability to restructure things in a very different manner. Now Rahu is going to move into Punarvasu Nakshatra. So when Rahu moves in trines, when Rahu moves in squares, it gives you a testing period. It makes you work for something that you are wanting. So for Aries and um, for Libra and you know Capricorn, it's going to be and Cancer. It's going to be this three months is going to be a little working time for you people to prove your metal. If you've been able to prove your metal, Rahu will be good for you. But when we're talking about Rahu moving into the 12th house of confinement, Rahu moving into the 12th house of divine interventions, divine powers. And for this gentleman here, it's a combination of Saturn and Venus. Saturn is your sixth lord, aspecting the sixth house also. Sixth lord of litigations, lawsuits. Okay. And Saturn is the seventh house of public platform. It is the seventh house of open enemies. So till now, the enemies that were hidden as of sixth house now will come out in the open for him. It is, I told it uh, in your, uh, when I was doing the Tithi, when I was doing the Panchang reading for Donald Trump in uh, then also, I did say that it is going to get a little uh, hot for him now because Saturn and Venus combination in the 12th house definitely means that there is a combination of feminine forces working against him. They could be very beautiful. They could be very accomplished ladies working against him. Very hot on his tail. And when Rahu moves in, he brings about sudden changes. He brings about very, very different changes. And he is likely to, and Rahu, don't forget, Rahu is the redeemer. So wherever Rahu goes in your chart in transit, that is the house that you need to redeem at that moment in your life. So for me, if Rahu moves in my third house, then, it is my courage that I need to take up. I might be having something pending in terms of writing that I need to do. I could have an issue to, uh, you know, uh, settle with uh, regards properties. It I could have some pending karma regarding my brother that I need to work on. So lots of those things. Now Rahu is moving in his 12th house of losses, 12th lord over his sixth lord of litigations, third lord of speech. So these things will be redeemed for him. He has to redeem them. That is why I say transits are very, very potent. <clears throat> As we see, his final redemption would probably be coming when Rahu moves over his natal Rahu and son. But again, I would say, since it's in the Punar Vasu Nakshatra and not, so she would provide him some sort of protection. Something would be there to protect him, not as bad a fall as it could have been in Pushya. Because in Pushya, 
there are two strict principles of Saturn and Jupiter working. That's a formidable force. Okay. So let's move on to the creativity and progeny of, um, uh, you know, creativity and progeny. I told you because it's the Adi Shakti or it's the divine goddess. Divine goddess there would be expanding herself all the time. And everything comes out of her. So she's the powerhouse of creativity. C.K. Williams. Charles Kennett C.K. Williams was an American poet, critic, and translator. William won nearly every major poetry award. Flesh and Blood won the National Book Critics Circle Award in 1987. Repair won a 2000 Pulitzer Prize for Poetry, was a National Book Award finalist, and won the Los Angeles Time Book Prize. The singing won the National Book Award in 2003, and in 2005, William received the Ruth Lilly Poetry Prize. The 2012 film tar related aspects of William's life using his poetry. So he met his wife, Catherine, who was a French jeweler in 1973, and they have a son who is now a noted painter, Jed Williams. He has a daughter from an earlier marriage, Jessica Williams Burns, who is also a writer. Okay. So, and he has his moon. Moon happens to be his 12th lord of international fame, sitting right there in the 11th house of uh, creative, of recognitions, of accordances, and of um, gains. He's gained so much international fame by his, just by his poetries. And Moon is in 26 degree, huh, to, uh, 6 degree, 40 minutes, and third father. Coming back again to the, when you see the father that Moon comes into, Moon will come back into, um, you know, the third father or second father of this nakshatra, which is, which lies in the, um, Huh. The house of wealth, recognition. So, and, and moon is also placed in the 11th house of spouse and child. So the spouse is also a renowned uh, person. She's a note, uh, she is a French jeweler and child is also a noted painter. And we've said that the progeny, remember I told you that the progeny of this uh, people in this nakshatra will be somebody who had the creative power to get Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh as her children definitely will have very sporting and very, very strong progeny. Again, Mary Lynn's Walker, she is one of those, uh, you know, when I was a very young child, uh, not young, not that young child, when I was in my teens, there was a show, a soap opera going on called Santa Barbara. Okay. And that was very, very famous. And she was the, uh, one of the heroines of that uh, show, I do remember. And uh, she has uh, worked as a minister in a Christian minister and she works, still works with the youth. And, Ra and Moon is her 10th lord of profession placed in the ninth house of higher calling. She becomes a, the position of a Christian minister is similar to that of a guru. Ninth house is the house of a guru. So, and that's Vargottam for her. So she does that, okay? Ninth Lord of Fame and Ninth House of Fame and Religious Services. So skill, yes, she is, she was, you know, um, she was the first woman fighter pilot in the French Air Force, Caroline Agel. And she, at the age of 25, became the first woman fighter. She was highly skilled. You see, she has her moon right there in the Again, a Vargottam moon. 
so she is she received her degree she won many championships she was a skydiver everything moon is the second lord of administration second lord of wealth second lord of learning education tenacity everything and but you know moon is also becomes here for her it became uh, saturn and moon saturn moon is placed with saturn that in itself is uh, not very good for health and it is placed with the eighth ruler so her life was cut short by um, you know cancer at a very tender year age of um, what 20 uh, 34 not 34 32 yeah saturn is also there in punarvasu nakshatra so it makes it does uh, you know it's something to eighth lord ninth lord as ninth lord saturn gave her the name and the fame it's aspected by retrograde jupiter which is the 10th and the 7th lord so it gave her a name and fame in her career but as an eighth lord it also gave her disease jupiter also signifies cancer okay she was uh, she was you know um, given an award um, you know posthumous about as an aeronautic uh, medal okay and she was called a sparrow as a monique uh, she was a uh, nickname was uh, translates to a sparrow which was given because she was very petite she was very small okay but her real name was igai which actually means an eagle and and it suited her really beautifully they say that jupiter is in pisces at mid uh, center and you know it's because jupiter is in the uh, not in the sidereal chart it is in the western chart it is in pisces so it suits her better because she flew like an eagle like the bird that she was but she was called a sparrow because of her size but she had the guts of a eagle a lot of this nakshatra jupiter also aspects this nakshatra okay tony banks tony banks is a british guitarist with a musical group of genesis and you know there are so many um, so many examples that i can take up so we will um, do just a few we we'll leave a few and we'll do a few and then i'll take up the nakshatra uh, what should i say the symbols everything they are also very interesting now uh, one of the other thing is this is the sky this goddess she gives a protection and the very living of us is dependent on the food that we eat the clothes that we wear and the the roof over our head so she makes sure so if you have a planet in this nakshatra you will always have a roof over your head you will because she the sky is the roof over everybody's head okay so a uh, french politician leading the french uh, christian democratic party christine botin she served as a member of the french national assembly representing yelines from 1986 until 2007 when she was appointed minister of housing and urban development by president nicolas servo sarkozy she held this position until 23rd june 2009 she is best known for her very vocal opposition to civil unions in 1980 in 1998 and same sex marriage later on so she had been you know standing up for the right of others now you see that for her moon which is the lord of the seventh house of gains is or pad prapti gain in status pad prapti public platform is placed in the 6th house of service okay and it is aspected by the 6th lord mercury making her a very very service oriented uh, person when mercury is placed in the 12th house it gives us an ability to be selfless uncritical very very uncritical very accepting kind of a personality and that is what she shows that she was it is aspected uh, and 
and it is also aspected by venus which is the 10th lord as the 10th lord venus gave her the ability to be of service to others and to uh, you know uh, be very um, service oriented and take it up as a profession to help others at the same time when venus is in the 12th house it gives you an ability to share things with others to be extremely generous so venus mercury combination in the 12th house is <coughs> Jupiter the lord of the nakshatra is exalted and retrograde in the 7th house William Blake a tremendous you know um if you read about William Blake uh you will understand the kind of not just uh, humanity the genius that he was and his grasp on spirituality which is also very strong in this nakshatra because they believe in higher powers because it is governed by aditi which is which is the primordial mother force so they believe there's a strong belief there's a strong faith in spirituality and when you read about william blake you will realize that he was a very very spiritual person and uh you you see for him the moon is present right there in the 12th house so 12th house is your connect with the subconscious unconscious with the divine and rahu here and ascendant here is it's the ascendant lord moon is the ascendant lord so he has a very strong connect with the divine he has a very strong grasp of the divine so william blake here the moon is in lagna and it's the 12th house of imagination and unconscious mind the 12th house also represents the bed pre, the blood pre, uh, had he said that it was um <clears throat> the sexual energy was a prime moving force he believed that it could be into the highest power and in his very own simple words not using the chakra theory or anything he's written it as such he says it's the creative force is the primordial force and if it is properly channelized if it's properly used it can be the the force that connects you to the uh, you know the eternity to the divine and it is aspected here this is the combination uh, where venus is it is aspected by venus venus is the fourth lord of home bed comforts and masses and the 11th lord of income and contacts it is also the karaka of all things related to fine art and that is something william uh, blake personified fourth house is emotions fourth and we, uh, 11th house again is so many things that in his chart you will be able to understand because it's the lagna lord not just your mind frame it's also your lagna lord plays there very very important unfathomable energy this is one of the last examples that i'm going to take up because then we'll move on to the uh, symbols unfathomable energy this is also one example that i've taken up uh, in my uh, series when i have done the series on nakshatra one point each unfathomable energy is something this lady if you read just by reading you will actually start feeling giddy you know <laughs> yes baba ji just by reading i'm telling you you will feel giddy she did so much of work celia franca she was the founder of the national ballet of canada and its artistic director for 24 years but this is just the ending let's go to the start she was born as celia franks in london england the daughter of an east end tailor her family were polish jewish immigrants she began to study dance at the age of 4 and was a scholarship student at guildhall school of music okay and 
Royal Academy of Dance. She made her professional debut at 14. She caught the attention of choreographer Walter Gore and successfully auditioned for Mari Rambert's ballet company in 1936. Okay, she has a retrograde Mercury, a retrograde planet, redoing things, doing multiple things. Mercury is multiplicity. And we'll see how in the sixth house of service. Okay. So, in 1941, aged 20, she was recognized as one of the finest dramatic ballerinas in Sadler Wells Company. In 1947, she joined the Metropolitan Ballet as a soloist and ballet mistress. In it was there that she began choreographing for television, creating the first two ballets, Eve of St. Agnes and Dance of Solem, ever commissioned by the BBC. So she's a pioneer. One go. In 1950, a group of Toronto ballet mains asked Franca to start a Canadian classic company. A determined woman who thrived on challenges, she did the impossible in only 10 months. From here, we need to hold our seed bells onto our seeds, okay? While supporting herself as a file clerk at Eton's department store, she recruited and trained dancers, staged at promenade concerts, organized a summer school, gathered a talented artistic staff, and whipped her uneven but, unenthousi but enthusiastic new company into shape for its opening in 12 months. She has a full-time job. She's recruiting people. She's training people. She's running a summer school. And at the same time, having not just the front end, not just the ballet, uh, she's choreographing or she's recruiting uh, people for her ballet. She's also seen to a back end where she wants to make people happen. So the first line that when we read ever of a person, that he's a director of so-and-so company. The hard work that goes behind becoming, coming to that position is never recognized. But this was important because you see, she has, again, as I repeat, she has mercury. Mercury ability, mercury in itself gives her an ability to, give, uh, you know, to uh, be multitasking, multi-performing. And retrograde Mercury, so it will make her do things many times. In the sixth house, in its own house of service, she is doing things for others. With the eighth lord of transformation, with the fourth lord of masses, and the eleventh lord of contacts, gains. Mercury is aspected by Rahu, which is again the combination of showbiz and suddenness. So in 10 small months, she's been able to do that. I have just put it this small thing over here. She's done so much more, so much more beyond us to imagine. Richard Bronson. Again, they are very good environmentalists. People in Punarvasu Nakshatra. So Richard Bur uh, Burton has, uh, Branson has done that. He is not just one of the richest men. You know him for Virginia Airlines, okay? But um, he's done a lot, lot, Virgin Atlantic Airways, you know? But he's not just done only for himself. He's the carbon footprint that we're leaving behind. They're making a real attempt in, you know, decreasing that carbon footprint. Lots. Ford Harrison. So there's so many points that we can cover on this, just on this nakshatra. Humor. Nurturing. Again, nurturing, learning and adaption by any percent. Uh, J.J. Krishnamurti. J.J. Krishnamurti was one of the most phenomenal minds, one of the most spiritual minds of his era. It is said that he just needed to sit at one place for a moment, for a minute, look at everything. And even years later, he could remember that incident piece by piece, you know, second by second, every minute detail about it. He was 
that deeply grounded in the now and the here and the now. His books are phenomenal. One should read his books, at least one book to know what he means. I am is one of his books. So uh, I am is the name of one of his books, beautiful book. And Annie Besant was one of those people who actually nurtured him under his being. Did uh, the, Theos uh, the Theophilosophical Society, I'm now forgetting the name of the society that she founded, but it went places and learning, nurturing, adoption came very natural for her. Again, you see a Gaj Kesari Yoga happening in the fourth house of learning and nurturing of motherhood. So she was able to do that because it's two things. So the nakshatra as well as the house allows her to portray this kind of a uh, situation, portray this kind of a emotion out. Okay, so let's come to symbology. <laughs> so what is the symbology of this nakshatra, bow and arrow? So uh, again, we come back to the chart of Sri Ramchandraji. So he's best known in any of his photographs, if you take up, okay, you, you, he is not, the bow is synonymous with uh, Sri Ramchandraji and his bow was known as Sudhanva. Okay, and it will. It is. Uh, this is a typical example of a potential energy which converts into kinetic energy for all of science students. Also, uh, for uh, you know the arrow and the elasticity, it has a potential. But when you let it go, it becomes. It converts into a kinetic energy. So there is a potential in all these people they just need a little more of prodding they need somebody to push them to do something good they uh, people with planets in punarvastu nakshatra may not know their own potential but once they are ignited by others the arrow invariably reaches the mark okay so it is like achieving, achieving goals is very easy for people of this nakshatra. Why? But, but it's a potential that needs to be converted into kinetic. There's a strong movement associated with this nakshatra. Athletic and energetic. That's Onida Vala. Okay, she was an Italian female athlete and the first Italian woman to win an Olympic gold medal. She won it in the 80 meter huddles event in 1936 summer olympics in berlin after establishing the new world record during the semi final saturn the lord of the second house of wealth okay and the third house of un arms unlocking of karma limbs basically also unlocking of the karma is placed in the nakshatra of punarvasu it is associated with venus venus is the sixth lord of competition and the 11th lord of games so she wins a lot of competitions with these games. And it is also injuries and troubles. Six houses, what? Six houses, injuries. So an account of profession, any injury that you feel or you make is the sixth house Venus here. So, and we know that Jupiter is the planet. Jupiter is knowledgeable, ethical, respected, pleasant teaching. So this Jupiter also along, Jupiter provides a great deal of, um, you know, protection in its own right. So people having planets in this nakshatra, if you rever your guru, if you rever your mother, you have a lot, lot to gain. But again, I would say that don't do it because you have something to gain. Do it because you should. As I told you again, I've been telling you that this nakshatra is related to Purshartha. It is... Uh, it gives you the ability to gain things, power, status, uh, gains, knowledge, name, fame, whatever you want to. The best part is this is energy. This nakshatra is pure primordial energy. So it, you have the ability to uh, channelize this energy in a direction that you want to. 
okay and it is all about accumulation it is all about labor steve jobs inventor sophisticated uh, entrepreneur he had his jupiter retrograde albert in the sixth house of service sixth house of competition he never let competition stand apple today even today is the highest selling brand in the us and the world over in spite of other companies making huge strides steve jobs company is still the number one in the world aspected by rahu jupiter the nakshatra lord whenever whenever uh, a nakshatra lord is placed so uh, whenever a nakshatra lord is placed in the nakshatra always holds very strong position always if it is afflicted then the position is diminished but otherwise it holds a very very strong place and if say supposing uh, mars is uh, placed in mm, no then we will not be having that but uh, yeah so supposing if jupiter is placed in the third pada or the fourth pada of punarvasu then it becomes vargottam if it is placed in the um uh, yeah then it becomes vargottam or if for that matter if saturn is placed in anuradha um ek do teen char third pada okay then it becomes vargottam in that case it gets very very strong results gives very strong results now the animal is cat if you see if you build up with nakshatras there are very very many parameters you can work on you can uh, you can use uh, these you can use these as helpful uh, redemption methods that is uh, you can use these parameters also as um, redemption by redemption method i mean is you can use these paragraphs uh paragraphs these parameters as uh, remedial measures okay so see the animal is and you will see a very strong connectivity between all these parameters the animal is female cat okay she is very quick on her reflexes she always falls on her feet so people of this nakshatra will have an ability to uh to always be able to stand up no matter where they fall from they will always again rise up and this cat is revered you know in the egyptian culture the cat is revered the many cultures where the cat is also revered okay again knowledge is a very strong part because of the word associated with it they have very discerning method in india they say that dood ka dood and pani ka pani that means the ability to uh, you know uh, separate the water and the milk in a bowl is something that a swan can do they made for life they pay for life they very beautiful looking and so this brings us to the end of uh, the lot of things the profession is limitless for people in this nakshatra but if your 10th lord happens to be here you can take up space related you can take up archery you can be a technocrat traveling and tourism very very uh, essential part we saw with um, branson also that he was part of he was the owner of one of the biggest airlines in the world virgin atlantis so um virgin airways you know so hotel industry technology we saw apple for steve jobs so so many things that people can take up this is nakshatra is good for nearly everything for nearly doing every philanthropic work this is not as good as i would say like the purva uh, uttara ashara or the pushya nakshatra but most of the auspicious things can be done specially especially when you have any renewal kind of activity so supposing your house is under construction okay and uh, what happens is many a times people have to stop construction 
for many reasons you know they they could not be having time they could be lack of funds they could have been going on a journey which took some other time or there's something other happened in the house for the reason or sometimes the construction material is not available many things so if you start rebuilding your house in this nakshatra you are going to get a very fabulous good beautiful house in completed in a very short time as a remedial measure i always say that vishnu sahasranam is the best so uh, when we do 7 26th 25th 27th 28th and 29 yeah 25th uh, just a second 24 is um four six are 24 so 25 26 27 and 29 these uh before four anyways they can always chant it i mean the number is not yeah 25 minutes <laughs> right that's what i'm saying 25 26 27 28 why do i come i was just thinking why am i getting an odd number at the end 25 26 27 28 <laughs> so these four uh, padas of the vishnu sahasranam relate to the punarvasu first second third fourth pada respectively and if your moon is placed in any of these if you continue to chant this name you are going to be blessed and you are going to be taken care of if somebody i told you that you can you can uh, use these parameters many are parameters of the nakshatra into uh, as remedial measures so you can give milk fourth house also moon also denotes milk to a female cat in the mithuna nakshatra which is mercury plus jupiter you can give green moong green sari to a brahmin because mercury represents the green color and jupiter is brahmin again in karkarasi we've seen a female cat is one of the representations and milk is moon and there's a temple in uh, peri- uh, where you know the gods and goddesses pertaining to this nakshatra are worshiped and they help you redeem yourself for many things so this brings me to the end of you know uh, this nakshatra oh amazing it is punar basu <laughs> rahu is also about to move so i was like uh, many people will be interested to know what's going on and how rahu is going to behave so that's what yes, i always and rahu is going to leave lot of mark in this nakshatra but we will cover carry it some other time oh yeah that's what i always say that people keep asking oh this planet has moved into this uh, nakshatra what's going to happen well first we have to know the nakshatra if you don't know what the nakshatra is how will you know what the planet is going to do i mean so we can see and uh, jupiter is also going to change the nakshatra very soon it will go to jeshtha in december i guess and saturn has already changed <laughs> yes saturn has changed and Purvasana. saturn has done a good purvashara so yes yes all those who work real hard in mula they will be able to gain a lot of benefits coming their way with saturn moving in purvashara Okay thank you very much then okay. we'll get back soon thank you for coming and next nakshatra we will decide soon <laughs> Yes we will decide soon we will decide soon okay. till we meet again have bhavajit have a great time and all of you yeah. out there too. Yeah same to you bye